black-throated blue warblers are a small songbird that are found in the understory of mature woodlands. They are mostly found from the northern half of the Great Lakes east to the Atlantic Ocean. They have a relaxed, perhaps lazy sounding song that can sound like beer, beer, bees. My name is Rob, and this is Songbirding. I'm at the Lindsay Tract Trails late in the afternoon at a time when fewer birds sing. The trailhead is along the busy Highway 6 the only road that runs continuously from one end of the Bruce Peninsula to the other. Although these trails are mostly used by cyclists, I have found this to be a productive location for birding, having found a number of breeding songbird species here over the years. I'm just going through make sure stand a white pine into a clearing there's an open wetland there's a swamp sparrow ringing We've also got our red Iberia. Paying a little extra attention to it. Make sure it isn't a blue head Iberia. That sounds red eyed to me. Blue Iberia is very uh, much more sweet sounding. A little higher pitched. I think that may be a legit rattlesnake. Problem is, of course, it's not all that visible. Normally when rattlesnakes rattle on the Bruce Peninsula that I found, they have been open in the sun. You can see them. This is under some shrubs. This is under some thistles and goldenrod that that rattle came from. So that's a Massasauga rattler. So that was interesting. I was just walking along this would be a gravel path with really tall wildflowers along each side, which includes mostly white clover, wild parsley, goldenrod, and oh, some kind of thistle. 
And something was scurrying along underneath one of them. Underneath some thistles trying to get away from me. Okay, though you're hearing the distance is northern flicker. Anyways, as I was walking along, something scurried a little bit, which is normal. You could have been chipmunk, anything like that. But then there was a rattle. Normally, if I had just heard the rattle, I would have thought it's probably a bug. Some uh, dragonflies sound like that when they take off. A little bit of a buzz. I don't think that's what this was. It's got three wax wings flying over. Not really vocalizing though. I think I'm looking at a swamp sparrow at the trail. Yep. A couple swamp sparrows. And a song sparrow as well. Well, I'm gonna move back into the woods again. Is that a red eyed beer? Typical song. Seems to have stopped. Back on now. Now we're walking through Maple Forest. Yeah, the bees may be 70, 80 feet high. I'm gonna try to see if there are some black or blue workers. One of the spots I found them before. I think it'd be pretty reliable if you know where they breed. I think I very briefly heard black black throated blue warbler. Singing, but either quietly or far away. Both are possible. Walk slowly, keep an ear open. Blue again. I think I'm, this trail is turning towards. There it was again. We're heading in that direction. There we go. That we, we, we. Listen for a moment. So 
who you might have heard me mention before, Black Throat Blue Orbit, Black Throat Green Warbler, they both different songs. There it is again. But they sound like they're coming from the same voice. Black Throat Green Warbler is probably capable of learning that song. If it was raised by green warblers. Sorry, black throat green. If it was raised by blue warblers. There's a very clear version of the call there. This sounds loud enough that I should be able to see this bird. Oh, there he is. The thing about the black-throated blue, unlike the black-throated green, they're a very, very dark bird. It's actually difficult to tell that it's blue at all. It really just looks like it's black and white until you get some clear photos. The back is more of a gray blue. Uh, bright blue. It is a dark slaty grayish blue. And without amazing lighting, it doesn't photograph very well. Even with amazing lighting, it doesn't photograph very well. straight above me, almost. Singing on a fairly large branch. Branch is thicker than he is wide. I must say we accomplished I'll say I accomplished my mission here, of finding one of these. And hearing it sing, I think he's noticed me now. He's switched branch suddenly. He's still singing. He's not ticking, though. Flying about a bit, catching bugs, picking them off leaves. It's maple tree he's in right now. So he has a slight, and all black little blues have this, they have a small little white spot on their wing, which is how you can identify a female. They're fairly drab, but they have a white patch on the wing, a little square, a little tiny square rectangle. No other warbler has that.
he seems to have moved on. No longer singing, it sounds like. I think I'll move on too. something interesting seeing here. I believe we have a pine warbler. We'll see if this... There we go. So, pine warbler. I want to compare it to a swamp sparrow. Swamp sparrow is a lot more ringy. Sometimes the pine warbler starts soft, goes louder than softer. Sometimes it starts strong and then goes lighter, just fades out. You hear it's much softer, it's not like a bell ringing. parking lot here too. So that's why it's a bit louder here. I'm gonna redo that because of the So what we're hearing here is a pine warbler in a red pine. in the red pine is next to Highway 6. So this is pretty loud. Thankfully it's not like a 400 series highway or something. This is a highway with intermittent traffic. We can get a few seconds of quiet to hear this pine warbler. Mostly yellow bird sticks to the tops of these pines. These can be confused with Swamp Sparrow Song, very similar. Chipping Sparrow Song, very similar. Possibly a Worm Eating Warbler Song. <laughs> In just over an hour at the Lindsay Tract, I've observed 31 species, six of which I got clear audio recordings. You can see a complete checklist with audio clips at the website songbirding.com. Songbirding, the Bruce Peninsula, was recorded, engineered, narrated, and created by me, Rob Porter, with Creative Commons music from Scott Buckley.